Welcome back friends. So I picked up this induction heater, which is supposed to be able to heat up stuck bolts and get them loose easier. But I think it could be used for so many other things as well. Now this one was the least expensive prepackaged handheld one on Amazon. There were some other DIY kit ones at Amazon that were cheaper, but this one was ready to go and supposed to be operated via hand. So it's kind of interesting. The box itself doesn't really tell me much of anything. So uh, let's go ahead and get inside here. Take a look. Here's the actual coils for the induction heater. They give you three different sizes, that's nice. These are the little Frankenstein bolts that attach the coils to the doohickey. Got a warranty of some sort, a user manual. And here's the bad boy herself. Operates on 110. Airflow for venting, so obviously it has some fans in here to cool down the electronics. Now, I don't know exactly how this one operates, but most of them have like two MOSFETs in them, and they use like the induction coils themselves and a, and a capacitor or a bank of capacitors to create a resonant circuit with those two MOSFETs, and they blink back and forth like that to create the uh, oscillations. And of course, they get nice and hot, so that's probably a good reason why it has fans inside. So we have lots of pretty fun things on here. This is the hot rod flameless heat system for professional use only. So all you non-professionals don't use it. Yeah, right. Do not look directly into LED lamp. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, that's still not a lot of good stuff on this thing. Supposedly this thing is 1000 watts, but it doesn't even say that on here anywhere. Oh, yes it does. It's 10 amps at 110 volts. So that would actually be 1100 watts. Good to know. So just in case some of you guys don't know how an induction heater works, this thing will put out a high frequency electric current, which when you run it through these coils, anything inside these coils that conducts electricity will start to heat up because as the frequency oscillates around this coil, it'll induce eddy currents inside whatever workpiece you're trying to heat up. And that causes heat in the workpiece via two different processes. One, it creates heat just from the resistance of whatever you're heating in the first place, which is why low resistance materials like aluminum and copper, you can't really heat with induction heating. And the second way it creates heat in the object is through hysteresis, which only works in a magnetic material like steel because it makes the atoms try to go back and forth fl flipping their magnetic poles. And the atoms don't like to do that, so it actually causes internal friction in the thing itself. Now, I was actually surprised to learn that it even works on brass. Someone on the local gun forum was mentioning that they had actually seen some people using induction heaters for annealing brass cases. So let's try that out. Let's see if it'll actually anneal this brass case. And in case some of you guys don't know, if you reload your brass cases, they'll actually work harden over time. And it can cause like the necks of the cases to split. But if you kneel them, that makes the cases last a lot longer. So that's why people kneel their brass cases. But yeah, let's see if this will actually work. I'm really intrigued. All right, so getting this thing set up is pretty simple. We just have to take these little screws out here and insert the coil into the end of it, like so. Screw in the little Frankenstein bolts. There we go. That's good to go. Now let me get it plugged in. Oh, wow. I guess the uh, fan on this thing runs as soon as you plug it in. But it's not supposed to be heating up the coil until you actually push this button right here. Which you can see the LED lights when you do that too. So let's try this thing out on a bolt first. Whoa, I see smoke coming off. Look at that. Whoa, can you see that? It's actually turning red. It's up over 200 degrees. I'm gonna turn the lights off, see if maybe you can see that better. Whoa. 
There it goes. Things glowing red. Ha. Ah. Yeah, it has this thing pretty hot. That's nice. Woo, there's heat coming off that bolt, that's for sure. Now let's see how it does for the brass. Yeah, there it goes. Wow, you can actually see the electrical field pushing the brass around a little bit. That's funny. Hey, turn this thing off. Oh, that thing's pretty loud. But you can see that it definitely changed the color of the brass right through here where I was holding it on it. And the back end of the case looks pretty much the same. So I would say that this case is successfully annealed. I'm going to try it on another case again. There we go. That took about seven seconds to change the uh, color of the brass. So there you have it. I would say you could definitely successfully anneal brass using an induction heater instead of trying to do it with a torch. It took about seven seconds with uh, this coil right here, but it might actually be even faster with a smaller coil because the effectiveness of the induction heating does depend on how tightly around the object that you're heating you can get the coil. So this little coil that it comes with might be just a little too small for this 30-06 case, but it might be good for something else, might fit something better. And you can even make your own coils if you need to. It's just copper wire. And this is a little bit of high temperature sheathing around it. And since it's just copper wire, you can actually bend this thing around to get it to fit however you want it to also. You could probably set up your brass like this if you wanted to and bend this guy so it points up and touch it down around the, the cases like this. That might make it a little easier if you were wanting to go this route. But hey, yeah, this proves it. You can definitely induction and kneel your brass. And if you're wanting to get this thing, I got a link down below in the description. Bye, thanks for watching. Please hit that subscribe button and give me a thumbs up too. It really helps the channel out.